Welcome back, everybody, to another live stream. And today we are going to talk uh, dropper posts on gravel bikes. And if I'm honest, um, you know, I'm going to have to say that they were not uh, something I expected to like. You guys know I'm a bit of a retro grouch uh, that, you know, I, I don't like complexity on the bike. And I always thought that dropper posts kind of added that, added complexity to, to bikes. And I didn't really see the value. I got a chance recently to try out the PNW Coast uh, dropper post, which is pretty interesting insofar as it also combines suspension. Also, a quick note, this is something GCN cannot do, this fancy live stream setup made possible by our Patreon supporters. So anyways, uh, as I said, originally this video was supposed to be a unboxing of the Coast dropper post, but I really couldn't wait to try it out. So I slapped it on the bike took it with us to ride going to the Sun Road. This is a quick clip of me. I've already activated the dropper post. We're, we're bombing down 3,000 feet uh, from Logan Pass. Um, and it's, it's, it's been really interesting to use as someone that didn't think that they would like a dropper post. And today, we've got a special guest. We're going to be chatting with Aaron from uh, PNW Components. So welcome to the show, Aaron. Hey, thank you, man. And thank you guys for uh, inviting me on here. I'm stoked. Yeah. So yeah. dropper posts on gravel bikes. Uh, I mean, is it a thing? Like, how's the reception been with that idea? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a thing. It's, uh, it's one of those, well, it's one of those things where uh, some of us love it, some of us don't understand it, and some uh, are curious about it. So it's, uh, post, it's, it's kind of a, an interesting one right now. We got in pretty early with them. I mean, we, we had a 27.2 dropper in uh, 2015 when we launched, and that was when we were getting a lot of kind of like a lot of head scratching. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, from our standpoint, they, they make the ride more fun because you have more confidence. The bike's more maneuverable. And even for things like, you know, bike packing or trekking, or maybe you have a like a, a cargo e-bike that's super heavy, um, mm -hmm. dropping that post so you can swing a leg over and not lose your balance when the thing topples over actually helps quite a bit. So um, yeah, the reception's been growing. We're seeing a lot more internally routed droppers, which to me indicates people are, well, frame manufacturers are jumping on board, um, but also riders are, are wanting to upgrade their bikes. So it's it's definitely interesting. Yeah, I think yeah. my hang up initially with uh, you know the idea of a dropper post on a, on a drop bar bike, on the gravel bike, was that it wasn't explained very well by a lot of marketing material material yeah. that that i personally watched you know i'd see a video someone would drop the post and all of a sudden they're, they're doing wheelies or jumping off you know logs or whatever and i know dropping a post myself i'm not going to be able to do that but it wasn't until actually getting a chance to to write it that the other kind of values and benefits of, of using a post like came came to light man yeah i think I think as an industry, we're all somewhat guilty of like, we always want to go to like the most epic demonstration of what something can do. But yeah, at the end of the day, like I'm not doing trials on my gravel bike, but I really <laughs> like having a drop run. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea is if you can get the seat out of the way when things start to get steep, um, paved or not, I mean, even if it's on a paved road, it's still kind of nice to drop the post. Uh, it's less strain. I've noticed for me being a super lanky um, uncomfortable person. Uh, it's nice to, to not have my, my neck cr uh, cramped quite as much. Um, but yeah, I mean, once you talk about the gravel side of things, I mean, if you are doing a little bit of single track or going up and over a route or some rocks, um, having the saddle out of the way is really, really helpful. It, it makes it easier. It's safer. Um, mm -hmm. and it just makes the bike more maneuverable. Like you don't have the seat quite as high in between your legs. So you're able to kind of lean it over side to side. Um, so that's been the, that's been the biggest thing. And, you know, obviously it started with mountain bikes and for the same reasons, you don't want to get to the top of the hill, open up your quick release, lower the seat. And then when you go to the next climb, repeat, right. It's kind of a annoying thing. So once they came out, like for me, that was a total game changer. I thought, th I, I still think they're one of the coolest and most helpful inventions in like the last 10 years, at least. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I, I think now we're basically starting to see this adoption and trends start to happen over on the you know 700 c side which is for me it's rad i mean i think there's a lot of cross pollination between both sides these days yeah i think yeah. one of the the benefits that that came to light for me as i got a chance to to play with them is uh you know typically you know unless you're you're super flexible it's kind of hard to get into the drops and it's generally where you want to be on the descent yep. and by actuating that dropper it just makes you know using the the drop part of a drop handlebar that much more functional yeah Absolutely, man. Yeah. I mean, being able to just get lower, 
uh, in general definitely helps a lot. So, um, yeah, no, I've, uh, I found the same thing. I mean, obviously there's a lot more like shallow drop bars out there, which also helps, but the combo of the two is pretty awesome. Um, so I don't know, it just seems like there's a lot more focus on comfort while still keeping an eye on performance, which is pretty cool. It's a nice middle ground. It used to be so like, I don't care how comfortable you are. Like it's all about, you know, on the road side of things, right. It's like all about arrow and, and getting in a tuck. Um, and yeah. for me, like I can barely ride a bike like that. That's got a super low front end. Um, so it's not, anyway, like I was saying, it's kind of nice seeing the, the, the two worlds combining and, um, kind of having it both ways, which is cool. Yeah. We were yeah. chatting earlier before we started the stream. You, you, yeah. You've seen some interesting uses with the dropper posts and commuting bikes and, and e-bikes. Yeah, that's um, that one's been really exciting. We have uh, rad power bikes based here in town uh, in Seattle and obviously, you know, very strong following here in town. We see them everywhere. And we've been getting a lot of customers who are reaching out specifically about the coast post. Um, I think they've they've maybe heard about it you know, we did some, some specific kind of like ad campaigns around showing it being used on commute. And, um, a lot of folks are buying them for totally non mountain performance reasons, right? It's all about this bike's pretty heavy. I'm maybe not the most comfortable rider. Um, so like rolling up to a stop sign, I want to have both feet on the ground while I'm still seated. And it was, mm -hmm. it was just kind of like, it clicked like, duh, that's a great idea. Like why? Yeah. Like we should have jumped on that one earlier. So we're seeing a lot of that uh, happen as well. Um, a lot of shops like uh, that, that again, have that focus on more commute. Um, they're starting to bring them in specifically for that. And so again, it's just, I don't know, I, it excites me because it's obviously, you know, having a mountain bike background, I knew about them for a long time and I, I really enjoyed them, but there's so many more uses that are coming out now. It's pretty, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. Um, I love kind of those unexpected benefits. I know, um, you know, when I was delving into electronic shifting, you know, one of the unexpected benefits from from that was co totally not performance related, you know, but yeah. it was for adaptive uses. You know, if you have hand problems or if you have a single hand, you know, you can have all the shifting on one side rather than having to re rely on the left and right shifter. And yep. it sounds like something like that is happening with with the dropper post. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, it's 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 very cool. Um, yeah. The other the other one is around you know obviously comfort rolling up to stops. Like I mentioned, just if you have a heavy bike. Um, I've done it myself actually, where I'm tired and the bike's heavy and I put the foot down and kind of like stumble. Um, so when you're able to come up, drop the post before you stop, makes things a lot easier and then you can swing your leg up and over. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, like on a long ride, my hips get pretty sore. Right. Uh, so it does, it does help kind of swing that leg over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, one, one of the, the things I've, I've enjoyed about using the dropper post is, you know, I'll use a bike for, for just day riding, but also sometimes I'll, pedal down to the river with my fishing boots and that totally changes the the stack height of things so being able to go from you know my regular riding shoes to, to fishing boots without having to go and you know yeah fill with the <laughs> fill with the, with the with the post is pretty cool that's totally true actually yeah I've, I've had the same thing where yeah my clip my uh sorry my riding shoes are much thicker than like i don't know some running shoes or whatever if i just want to run down to grab a beer or something and yeah i do i drop my post just like a half inch and then i'm dialed um, so yeah, no, no, it's cool. It's really cool. I, I, I don't know, man. It, it's, uh, I think we're going to continue to see it, especially as, as like different controls are, you know, innovated as well. Like, so for instance, like the different levers that we have, especially on drop bars, I'd say we're like 50% of the way there. I think there's a lot more that could be done there for kind of finding where the right placement is and how it works. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And then on the commute side, like, do you even need a lever? Like the old school, like just pull the lever from the bottom. Um, I don't know if you guys have right. seen those, but like, why isn't that adequate? You know, like maybe that's all we need. Yeah. You don't need cables <laughs> and all this stuff. So um, yeah, we'll see where things land, man. It's happening pretty quick. Yeah, I was doing a search for, um, you know, we were at the Chris King open house and uh, Adam Sklar was there and he, had, he built like this, this crazy kind of uh, cruiser mountain bike. And he had one of those dropper posts, which had a simple lever. And I was like, oh, yep. that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what I need. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's nice because that's, again, it's just, especially in a nasty, like a pretty wet area where your cables get fried pretty fast. Like you never have to worry about that. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. I don't know. We're keeping an eye on it. It's not something we've had a ton of requests for, but again, if it's kind of a surprise use, we wouldn't be getting requests until we actually have the product. So, um, anyway, yeah. let us know if that's of interest of you guys or for you guys. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's do, uh, I'm going to play some B-roll of um, the, the post that I'm testing, and then we can kind of talk over it, and uh, you can tell me what's going on here. 
Sweet. Um, so uh, first off, one thing I noticed is the packaging is, you know, all seems all recyclable, right? Yes. That yeah. We've, so we've done our best to remove all plastic. I think there's still a little bit, I think there's just one little baggie on the dropper post side of things. We just have a little like sticker and some hardware that goes in there. We've had a tough time replacing that, but otherwise, um, yeah. yeah, all recyclable, man. Yeah, so this is the post that um, you guys sent over to test. It's the the Coast, and this one's unique in so far as it has suspension. Yeah, so you'll see up on the up by the saddle head, there's that little Schrader valve. Um, so you can actually adjust the air, um, which is it's got it's it's a dual chamber. So part of the chamber and part of the air pressure is controlling like how much suspension there is, uh, and the mm -hmm. other part is how fast the post actually is returning. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty clever little, little device. And this one's the 27.2 externally routed version. So that's pretty darn universal across a lot of uh, skinny tube bikes at least. Um, but we've got, yeah, 31.6, 30.9 for larger uh, seat tubes. Um, so there's a valve that where you would adjust the, the air pressure and you, you would use exactly. just a, I haven't actually filled with mine, but just a, a typical or regular shock pump does the trick, right? Yeah, you would need the shock pump. Yeah, so it needs to be that high pressure. So like a, a tire pump wouldn't work out on that one. But um, yeah, just any any old shock pump will work great right on that. So and this then, is a loam lever. And um, it, it looks like you you guys make different mounting options. So this is a 31.8. And you can also adapt it to regular mountain bike bar, but also um, kind of have it mesh in with pre-existing mountain bike components. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Loam levers are... Uh, very like, I could go on all day about that thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the, the clamp that you have is the 318, so you can mount it up by the stem um, on drop bars. We also have another lever called just the, the drop bar lever kit, very unique. Yeah. Um, and it's got a 24 millimeter uh, diameter clamp. So that actually fits in the drop. So you can like mount it up kind of, uh, up, well, basically up near your shifter pod um, yeah. in the drops. Well, no, it's actually in the curvature of the drop. So that one's pretty nice too. And the lever just sticks out. So if you're down in the drop or, you know, in, in the drops themselves, it's easy to access. Um, we're working on another version where you'd be able to access it from below as well as up top. Um, okay. that, one, that one hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. So, um, yeah, Lone Lover is pretty, pretty beautiful little, uh, piece of machinery. Yeah. <laughs> People seem to love it. <laughs> and yeah. it sold out looks like on your website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, well, that's a whole other story. Yeah, the the yeah. just the bike industry in general is just getting getting hit uh, with a lot of demand right now, which is great to see. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's frustrating because we can't keep stuff in stock. <laughs> so, yeah, is that too? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about the suspension. So there's that one kind of a valve hole, hole. So that when you pump air in there, that fills both the chamber for the return and also the the, the suspension part of the post. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, air is going to go into the chamber. We also have a uh, little hydraulic fluid in there. So there is a little bleed valve. So it's, you know, it's acting like it's really, it's quite similar to a suspension fork, um, okay. basically just one side of it. So it's got the damper. Um, so the damper controls how fast the thing returns. If you don't have any damping, it just shoots up, you know, like, a. you don't want that. It'll, it'll, it could catch you off guard. Um, right. but yeah, basically it's got the two chambers. So you add enough air so that the post, you know, when you're sitting on it, it's not moving. Um, and you're just going to adjust it to your body weight so that, you know, really this thing is a dropper post, a dropper post first. And then second, it does have some suspension. So this isn't something that is like, it's not a replacement for, you know, rear suspension on your bike. It's going to take those bigger hits out of the way. Um, and then, uh, otherwise function, you know, as a, as a seat post would. Um, yeah. so anyway, yeah, the, the air there is, is able to control both. Yeah. I just realized I've got a second camera guys. <laughs> so we can actually <laughs> talk, talk about it or show it while uh, we're talking about it. So I'm going to pin my video here. Yeah. Uh, so again, this is that, that valve, this unscrews, and this is where one would put your shock pump. Um, it's compressed right now. Uh, it might pop it open for, for funsies. Um, but are, so is, is, is there dampening adjustment or is it just all through, uh, how much air you put in here? No. So the, yeah, so the damping's all prefixed. Um, okay. and basically, yeah, I mean, if, well, with this post, if you were to not put, you know, enough air in it, basically it would, it would act more like a suspension post than a dropper. Um, okay. it, you know, it just wouldn't have enough to support your weight. So they, they do basically, it's kind of like an equilibrium, like you add enough air to hold your weight as well as provide some suspension at the same time. Right. 
Yeah. Um, and this one in particular is uh, externally routed. So when you mount this on your bike, this just misses the tube, uh, the seat tube. And one thing I found like a, a cool hack is if you run a half frame bag, generally the Velcro straps will keep this attached. So you don't need, you know, extra Velcro straps, but you can use your frame bag to, to do it. Um, anything else that you want to point out while I'm holding the lever up here? Yeah, well, funny you bring that up. I was going to ask how you had the, the cable routing because um, with external routing, there's not always, you know, uh, bosses for it. So I recommend right. like for BMX bikes, they make these little cool little Velcro straps. They're really thin and pinner. Um, those work really well. But yeah, like you said, frame bags work perfect. Uh, so we've yeah. been recommending that for folks who have it. Um, okay, so anything else on there is, yeah, the external routing, like I said. So basically how that works, the cable goes into that little, um, yeah, the entry point there. Um, and there's like a little sliding carrier that goes up and down. And basically what's happening is a nylon cable makes like a 180 degree turn and it actually shoots down the front of the post all the way to the bottom. So if you were to unscrew that bottom cap there, you'd be able to see there's an actuator. So really it's sort of like an internally routed post that we've been able to reconfigure so that you can run the, the routing external, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah, all the magic. I was on your, your YouTube channel and you guys had a, a video on how to maintenance or how to, how to do some maintenance on your post. Yeah. Which one, it's pretty cool because I think it takes yeah. uh, some of the fear factor away from, um, you know, potentially owning this post just because, you know, you guys give us, give people the tools to work on it. Yeah. So I saw that this came out and there was like a nylon, um, nylon cable that attached it mm -hmm. to some mechanism down here. Yeah. Um, yeah, the serviceability so. is pretty cool. I mean, the, the, you know, they're built around everything's contained in the cartridge, right? So you shouldn't have to do any maintenance to that ever. It's only if that little wiper seal where your right hand is, if that ever feel, you know, if the post feels sticky, you just do a service. The service takes, I don't know, all of 10 minutes or so. Um, yeah. It's pretty simple. You know, you just wipe it down basically and put in some more lube in there. So it's, uh, it is really easy to deal with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So while I have this close up view. Yeah, do you love in life? And uh, hold on. And uh, another cool thing is I've got a remote for the camcorder, so camcorders aren't dead. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. I know. We're zooming. Boom! <laughs> Boom! Take take that GCN. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got you got to take your victories when you can. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> one of the one of the questions that uh, was asked on uh, the Instagram is, you know, why I guess why are most droppers zero offset? And um, you know, yeah, I guess why are most, most drop, droppers zero offset and don't have some kind of offset built in? That is a really good question. So we, we had to, we obviously had to, had to choose one to start with. Um, so we used to have a setback post and then the complaint mm -hmm. was, hey, I have a mountain bike with modern geos where the cockpit's super long. I don't want a setback post. And then we said, okay. Um, you know, so it, you know, it's, it's tough. There, it seems like it's very, it's very split uh, crowd. So the reason that we have a zero offset is because traditionally um, to keep your reach numbers consistent, um, you don't want the setback. However, uh, that's not always true. Um, a lot of folks mm -hmm. do like the setback, especially like you said, 10 to 15 um, is pretty, pretty standard and pretty comfortable. We've even seen up to, you know, 20 to God, we got a photo, <laughs> we got a photo of the seat post the other day, I want to say it was like 30 or 40 millimeters setback. So that was the oh, most dang. I've ever seen in my life, but um, <laughs> someone was loving that, um, which is good. So yeah, it, bottom line is we, we use zero because that, that covers the wide, uh, wide majority of, of, of what folks want. So I think we're at a point where we should probably look into having a setback. Yeah. I mean, is it, I mean, is it fairly, um, significant task to, to add setback to, to seat post or? Well, so what we would do, so, you know, it'd be at the, at the factory, we would just have to tool up uh, another forging tool. That's got all the dimensions uh, obviously designed into it. And then we right. test it, make sure it passes all of our testing. There would be additional uh, strain on the post, um, which it would handle, but you know, again, we do, we do need to run it through testing and make sure it passes everything. Um, right. Because your weight is more, more shifted backwards rather than centered over the top. Um, okay. So we would run it through that testing and then we would just have, you know, a diff additional part numbers available. Right. Cause it's going to yeah. be, if the seats saddles move back, then it's going to be pulling this bar as well as, as it's going down as well. Exactly. Yeah. And, and where it's actually pinned, you know, where the seat collar goes around the post itself, that's going to have additional strain on it too. So um, again, I mean, we, these things are 
way overbuilt, but um, we still, just to meet the international standards, we would test it again. Right. Uh, so no, I mean, it's not, it's definitely not an impossible task. It was more trying to judge what the, you know, if there was enough folks out there who wanted it, that it was worth doing. Um, yeah. But at this point, I think it is. I'm going to try to actuate this. Bam. Boom. There we go. Nice. <laughs> So um, one of the other questions that people ask on the gram is, you know, is there um, you know, any hope for like a sub 90 millimeter um, dropper post? I know typically yeah. when you're mountain biking, the more is better and the geometry is set up for that. But on a gravel or a road bike, and because of the angles, you know, typically there isn't you know, as much flexibility for, for really big drop. Totally. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good question. And, and like you said, it's with the higher standover, it makes it challenging. Um, so with our, our, for talking 27, two posts, our pine and our, so pine is our, our externally routed dropper. And then the Rainier is our internally one. So basically they're same cartridge, just different configuration. Um, those we do have available in 90 millimeters of drop. And so okay. that has, that's made a lot of people happy. And that's actually one of our top selling products. Cause um, again, not everyone can run the full travel. Like maybe their, their legs aren't long enough where that's uh, an option or they just don't want it. Like they, they maybe are used to having the post all the way up and they just want a little bit of drop. So 90 mil has been nice. Um, the question about less than that. So 50 millimeters, for instance, uh, totally doable. We just, we haven't had many requests for it, so we haven't done it, but it's right. an option. It's totally, it's, it's actually less strain on the post. I mean, it's actually easier to do from an engineering standpoint. Um, right. Again, yeah, it's just, you know, if there's enough folks that would actually want that. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, very doable. Yeah, I was watching, um, again, I was perusing your, your, your YouTube channel and, yeah. you know, I'm, I forget which post it has, but you can, the user can actually set how much drop there is by, by turning a little shim in, in, the, in the post itself. Not to, not to let the cat out of the bag, but yeah, we, uh, we have a new post coming out. Uh, well, it's our new Rainier, but it's, it's 27 two and it will have travel adjust, but that one's still a little bit off. It's the, the smaller diameter posts are, are tough. They're tough to, to design because it's such a small, obviously a very small diameter and it's supporting right. a lot of forces. It's got a lot of moment loads on there. Uh, right. so they're a little bit more challenging. That's why we get a lot of requests of like, Hey, your larger posts are in up to 200 millimeters of travel. Why aren't they in the smaller? And I'd love yeah. to. It's just it. So far, the physics don't, aren't aren't on us on our side quite yet. So we're getting yeah. there. But um, yeah, the current Rainier is travel adjust. It's just a larger diameter um, right now. Yeah. So yeah, the smallest we make is a 30.9 millimeter. Cool. So, um, so we're we're about the halfway mark. So if you guys are enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps with view velocity, it spreads the video, all that good stuff, keeps this channel going. And I think I'm gonna open up to questions and Brian, already with the, with the blue hand up, uh, you've got the floor. <laughs> Brian, what beer do you have? Here, you gotta unmute uh -oh. yourself. Uh oh, he's muted. <laughs> okay. There he is. All right. Uh, the Sierra Blanca Lager um, here in New Mexico <laughs> right now, so I thought I'd pick up something local. Oh yeah, nice man. <laughs> um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, first of all, and if I were to get one of these in a thirty point nine, can I internally route that cable? Yeah, uh, we do make it in both, um, and yeah, yeah, we've we've got both. So the the coast is available internal, external, and then if you don't want the suspension portion, um, yeah, you would go with our Rainier or the Cascade is our externally routed post. Okay. Yeah. Um, if if I needed to service it, uh, I would assume you probably use like a 15 weight fork oil. Is that what's inside of it? Man, we make it we make it even simpler. So everything's self-contained actually in the cartridge. So there's no no bleeding, no swapping of oils. It's nothing like that. So you're you're literally you just there's a few bolts. You just take it apart, wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol, and then put some more lube on there, and you're good to go. Um, so if the cartridge ever failed, um, we just, we get you a new one. Um, that's a, that's a very easy one. And, and that's, yeah, that, 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 that's a pretty rare occurrence. So, um, yeah, no, they're, they're simple, man. We, we, you know, the whole idea behind the brand is we wanted more time on your bike, having fun and less tinkering, uh, tinkering time. Like, sure. We all love messing with our bike, but when you're out on the trail or you're out on the road, like it sucks when your bike breaks down, that's the worst thing ever, especially if it's raining. Um, so we, we've tried to 
everything we bring in, we try to make really simple to work on or, or just hopefully you don't have to work on it at all. <laughs> That's kind of the, the holy grail. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, you know, my next question was a seal kit also. I didn't know, but everything's in a, in a self-contained cartridge. So no oil, no seal kit. Yeah, that. so there is like a wiper basically, but that's purely purely just to get the biggest amount of grit off the stanchion when you're lowering it. Um, so it's not like with a fork where you have this like super tight tolerance bushing. Um, it's, you know, it keeps the post from moving, but it's not, it's not on that same, it doesn't serve the same purpose as like an open bath system would. Because those are the open bath systems, like you can't have any grid in there. And those wiper seals are really tight tolerance. And you got usually have like a sponge to keep everything lubed. Um, but with ours, it's, it's, it's all in the cartridge itself. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. What, uh, what bike are you riding? I've got a, a salsa timberjack. Hell yeah. Those are um, it came from the factory with a dropper on it. Mm -hmm. I actually used that dropper quite a bit today. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, having a little bit of suspension back there, being that it's a hardtail, yeah, that would that would really be nice. Just, yeah, just a little bit of squish in the rear. It, that, that's exactly it. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's not it's not going to be full suspension or feel like full suspension, but um, on hardtails, especially, man, it's really nice to just not get that jarring feeling up your spine. Um, so exactly. it does. It, it's you know, it takes the edge off of the bigger bumps, basically. Right. Yeah, I, th I think that's exactly what I'm looking for. Nice, awesome, man. Well, cool. we will, uh, we're ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, no, cool. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I was. I've been thinking about how to describe the the sensation of the suspension. Yeah. And for me, again, it's it's set up pretty stiff. Like whatever factory PSI you guys have put in there. And uh, the phrase that came to my head was crotch saver. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. it's one of those, you know, it, it's fairly rigid, which I, which I prefer. Like I've, I've tested, you know, the connect to suspension post, uh, the red, uh, red shift suspension yep. post. I like them, uh, but I'd prefer something a little bit stiffer. And I feel like this hits that mark. And for me, the way I see it, or the way, the way it's been working so far is those instances where I forgot to unweight and then I'm hitting a pothole or a rock, and usually it would, it would give you that kick in the pants. This kind of saves that pain. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. You know, I, 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 you know, obviously things like, you know, a carbon C post can help to a certain extent, but it's still, I mean, this thing's able to move, um, you know, 40 millimeters. So that's, that's, that's a lot. That's a very yeah. different experience. Um, so yeah, no, glad to hear that. Cool. So I've got a couple of questions here in the YouTube chat. I saw, Patreon, Patreon supporter Colin Foxley, uh, can you use a left-hand drop bar lever with the post? This, this question comes up a lot. Oh, that's a really good question, man. So there's lots of exciting stuff going on there in that world. So, um, okay, so Shimano GRX, the, the system they just came out with, I believe this, this season, um, or this season of bikes. So that one actually comes ready to go. Well, they have a version that's ready to go where the left shifter is a dummy shifter basically. And it's made for a droplet for a dropper. So that one's awesome. That came on, I have a Marin headlands, uh, that I ride as my, my gravel bike. It came with GRX. It's awesome. Um, you can also hack the SRAM, uh, a lot of the SRAM models. So basically there's this little plastic plug in there that keeps it, um, Basically, it, it allows it to uh, engage and then disengage. So like as you click, um, basically removing that little clicking mechanism so that the, mm -hmm. the lever is just flopping basically, but it has spring to bring it back. That works well um, for, for droppers. And we actually sell a little barrel nut that can fit into our post uh, if you're running external routing. Um, just, just if you guys are interested, just ask us. We have those available. Um, and so then you can run the cable from either direction with with our externally routed stuff. So that works pretty well. Um, outside of that, I believe, I, I don't believe Shimano is particularly easy to hack unless you buy the GRX system. So there's a few options out there. It's, it's getting better. Um, and forgive me to other brands. If you guys do have some others, the, those are the only ones I'm aware of right now, but I know, I believe TRP might also actually have one too. Do I have a follow-up question for this RAM hack? Is that destructive or is it just a matter of, or is, can you pop something out and put it back in later if, if you're not using um, I don't want to speak out of turn. I, I don't right. think like, I don't think you're like ruining it. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to put that back in. I just haven't done it. So I, I, I can't really say 
with much confidence about that one. Um, I would assume you could put it back in. It's not like you're like ripping it out and ruining it. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that could be a video for the, for the, for the channel. <laughs> if there's enough the people that want to see that, uh, let's see any other questions in the zoom, uh, raise your hand. If not, I'm going to go to the YouTube chat. Uh, let's see, Alex Botch. He said he's getting one for his hardtail soon. Nice. Um, Let's see. William R says, I'm old and brittle and want one for handicap mounting and dismounting. Yep. Yes, another great uh, unexpected use. Let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Jeff Lukes. That's it. I'm ordering a coast and loam lever. All right. <laughs> nice, well, glad man, this video you. could help you in your decision making. Yes. Um, so, Ian Richter asks, if, can you use a bar and shifter to actuate the drop bar lever? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, um, I believe Wolftooth has a really nice one. I think they launched okay. that earlier this year. That thing's sweet. So um, yeah, those work great. Uh, and to the best of my knowledge, I think really any bar end shifter would. I mean, because it's we we use derailleur cable, so that's all compatible. Okay. Um, some of them, you know, as you know, they've got like a friction setting, so you would just need to manually boop boop. Um, but the others, I, I think the Wolftooth is actually spring loaded, so that would be perfect. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, that might be something for the channel. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. If you guys have any other questions in the YouTube comments, leave those in the little chat box. Um, I'm curious. Uh, this is I forgot to ask this was if so. This is a 27.2 post. Can you shim it up to a larger C post diameter, or would that have some kind of detrimental effect? No, shims are awesome. Yeah, shims work great. I mean, we, we make, you know, larger diameters, but let's say you're wanting to swap it between bikes and you just want to buy one post um, or you're, or we're out of stock, which unfortunately is the thing. <laughs> um, then yeah, the 27 two is a great like starting point. And then the shims work great, man. They're like nine, 10 bucks. Um, King Creek makes one problem solvers makes them. Um, we're about to have some, we actually are finally took us five years, but you know, we're, we're finally bringing them in uh we'll have some in probably a month or two um but yeah no the shims are great there's no damage they're super they're hidden they're lightweight cheap i mean they're great right yeah right. um how has uh covid affected you know su supply chain i mean it looks like it, it has like just perusing the website <laughs> yeah so um for anything made in china i believe it's difficult but we we don't we don't make anything in china um so we we specifically stick to taiwan i know Technically, it's Republic of China, but that's not that's a whole other conversation. So they uh, they they think of themselves as as very autonomous and running, you know, very separate mm -hmm. from China. Um, as a result, they weren't affected by any of this. They also did an incredible job jumping on this virus like right off the bat. Um, I think best of really any well most countries. I think they're in Singapore did a fantastic job. So as a result of that, we haven't had any delays from their factories. All these delays are self induced. This is because we had no idea that the demand was going to be what it was. Um, so we've just run out because we just, you know, our lead times are long. It's like three to four months from when we order something to when we have it. And again, we didn't see this one coming, you know, and like, let's say in January when we ordered something and then we would see it in April, which is when things were just going crazy. Uh, we used, you know, data from last year and how our sales were and added a, you know, a growth multiplier to it, but it was not, like, oh, everyone's at home, they're bored. And the only <laughs> option we have is to go out on our bike. Like, that's it. So we, we, uh, we did not forecast for that. Um, but no, for, for us, uh, we, we haven't had any supply chain and delays. This, again, this is all our, our own doing. Yeah. So, who's, so who's buying these levers? Um, the lever, the, like the lum lever? Or the, the, the post. Is it um, yeah. mostly shops or individuals or like, do you have yeah, a we're, sense we, of yeah, we've got a really equal split. So um, for like just dropper posts in general, I mean, it's, it's all over the board. It's everyone from, uh, hey, I have a steel hardtail that I want to put a post onto, or hey, I've got a gravel bike or a trekking bike that I want to fix up. And then obviously, bread, you know, mountain biking is, you know, that's the traditional customer for droppers. Um, but yeah, in terms of who we're selling into, it's a lot of it's through a website and through Amazon. So that's like our, our directed to consumer channels. Um, and then we sell to a, a lot of shops. We, I think we have almost 900, um, retail okay. stores now, which is awesome. So it's been really fun working with all the shops and kind of learning like 
what questions they're getting from customers. And that helps us tremendously when it comes time to designing new products. So that's been, that's been really cool. Um, and bike shops are going nuts right now. Like, again, we, we're selling a lot through, you know, directly to customers at our home and don't want to go to a shop. But then for folks who are going in, like we just can't keep stuff in stock. So it's been kind of been kind of nuts, but um, we actually talked to a few shops. They're like, this is so crazy. Like we're closing for two to three days just to catch up on service. Like we just are wow, our doors and just building bikes and doing, you know, tune ups. So um, pretty unprecedented, man. I mean, actually related to this, I was, I was talking to one of our factories who does a ton of OEM stuff like handlebars, stems, you know, they're selling to all the big brands. Um, and they asked us right off the bat, like, you know, how are things going? And I was explaining that, you know, we're getting a lot of, a lot of interest and they're like, wow, well on the OEM side, like our sales are cut by like, by tremendously, you know, like it's almost down by half. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then, uh, you know, a few weeks later, he's like, all those orders are back and now everyone's like doubling what they had originally ordered uh, in, in an attempt to keep up. So I think, I think unfortunately there's going to, con there's going to continue to be a shortage of bikes out there, um, which is great for the used market. So we're, that's promising at least. Yeah. I just, I saw, just saw something, something. Uh, on Twitter and it said that uh, Shimano is rationing parts, you know, for OEM. I don't know what happened there. Um, that, I saw that as well. That's a really interesting one. I'd love to learn more about that because that is, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. That could have, that could have again been, um, they weren't expecting to see this big of a spike or maybe they had cut back when they first started to hear about COVID. Just again, I think all of our reaction was, oh, wow. Uh, like I'm done. Like I, I was, you know, I was pretty nervous about it. Um, so it could have been something like that. I, I don't know exactly what happened, but that was an interesting one. Cause they're, you know, obviously a huge player. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember, uh, when, when things were starting to get serious, we were in Tucson and you know, the first, the second thing we, I did after we tried to buy toilet paper, was <laughs> I went down to the local bike shop and I bought chains for all our bikes and, and yep. pads and a fistful of cable, um, because I had, a, I had a feeling that, okay, you probably won't notice any supply chain issues for a couple months, but you know, I don't want to, you know, not be able to ride all summer. So I definitely stocked up uh, on consumables. Well, it's, so that's an interesting one. And this is happening across everything, right? Like there was this initial shortage on a lot of stuff, um, you, you know, using like chains, for example, right? Like the chains are out there. They've just been, they're not packaged correctly for selling direct to customers, right? They're mm -hmm. in big boxes that are going to OEM, you know, assemblers that are assembling, you know, millions of bikes or hundreds of thousands of bikes. So I think it would, yeah, would have, if things went the way we thought it was going to go, I think it would just take a long time to get that out of the assembly factories and then get them individually packaged in aftermarket packaging. And the same thing was happening with, you know, if you go to the grocery, like massive shortages of flour, it's like, it's not like that there wasn't flour. It just was in big burlap sacks that were going to bakeries and now it's going direct to customers. So, um, kind of interesting. Yeah, that's the same thing with toilet paper. I read that there wasn't yep. necessarily a shortage. It was just you know, packaged for industrial use and yeah, yeah. Not direct to consumer. <laughs> yeah. Going to schools or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so you guys make proper posts, but you've also, I think recently started to venture into, you know, curly bars <laughs> and, yes. and stems. Uh, tell, yeah. tell me about that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, our, our like product family called the coast, we have got, we got the dropper, but yeah, we have a, uh, a, a drop bar as well as a stem. Um, the stem's pretty cool. So, well, we, we brought it in for two reasons. Um, our bars are four, we have a 48 and a 52. So it's pretty darn wide. Um, and again, it was thinking, the thinking that came about was, oh, wider makes the bike more stable, um, especially for folks coming from the mountain bike side. It feels more natural because our bars are kind of mm -hmm. ridiculously wide. Um, so kind of combining the two, you know, we started testing out some samples and it worked really well. It felt actually really natural. So we shortened the drop, shortened the reach. Um, but with that shorter stem, um, basically the rule of thumb we do is for every 20 millimeters wider, you go on your bar, you're going to want to bring that stem back 10 millimeters, um, to try to keep your, your reach numbers consistent. Um, mm -hmm. so we brought that in for that reason. So it is available in, you know, shorter than traditional numbers. Um, but it also has the, on the faceplate a, uh, it's a GoPro mount, so you can use it with your camera. Um, but where we've seen it work really well is with headlights that are compatible with GoPro mounts. Oh, so that's then cool. you can get your night riding going or your commuting, whatever it may be. And it, it's, it's an awesome option. So I've been stoked to see those starting to take off. Um, 
but yeah, no, we're, we're going deeper into it. I mean, gravel, all the, the entire team rides, like we all have our, our gravel bikes. It's just, it's convenient, man. You can leave right from the house. You don't have to like load up all your shit and then drive an hour and go to the trail and vice versa. So it's been, uh, it's been super nice, uh, being able to make parts for that too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we've got D DK cycles in the chat says he loves his 52s on his giant tough road. Uh, it really makes it feel like a drop bar mountain bike. Yep. Um, so if you guys have any other questions in the YouTube chat, we'll leave it there and I'll relay it to Aaron. Uh, anyone else in zoom? Um, well, tell me, tell us a little bit more about the company. How long have you guys been around? Yeah. Um, so we got going in, uh, in 2015. Um, and so, yeah, really. So my, my wife, Emily and I started the company and it was just the two of us up until basically January of last year. So it was, uh, oh, wow. we now, I think there's almost 15 of us on the team now. So it's been a crazy last fall months. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we, we looked around the industry and we wanted a, we wanted a brand that was not like super elitist and focused just on racing and being the lightest weight. And if you aren't on getting KOMs on Strava, you suck, you know, like that, we hated that. So we wanted to create something that had a really inclusive vibe and made stuff accessible, right? Like you don't need to spend more money for better stuff. That's just, that's just not true. Like I, I know that wholeheartedly. Um, in some instances, sure. If it's some crazy material and it's made by hand, like, yeah, it's going to cost more, but in terms of quality, reliability, affordability and uh, performance, it doesn't have to cost a ton. So um, I was a product developer. I designed bikes at Specialized and then at Marin. Um, so I had all of these, these factory connections and knew the quality they were putting out. And basically Emily and I put our, our heads together and, and started PNW, you know, basically leveraging all these connections that we had in Taiwan and, and here, um, mm -hmm. combined with wanting to, to bring products at more accessible price points. I and mean, that really is what it boiled down to. It was pretty simple. Um, yeah. so what we did is we change kind of how the business model was. Uh, there's other brands doing it now, but at the time, like you bring products in, you then put them in a distributor and then the distributor gets them into bike shops. That was the model. Uh, but by doing that, the price inherently has to be more expensive um, because the distributor needs their cut. Um, and at the same time, uh, we just didn't feel right about it. Like it, we, we felt that if we could connect directly with customers and, you know, educate them about the product and, and chat with them on, you know, Instagram or whatever it may be, like, we're going to be able to work with them directly. And we didn't necessarily need the distributor, not, not to say that, you know, I, that works for a lot of brands, but for us, we wanted a more intimate connection with, with who we were working with. Um, and so we were able to lower prices as a result while maintaining the same level of quality as, as we wanted. Right. So, I mean, um, it's taken a few folks a little bit of time to kind of understand that because your initial reaction when you see something that's less cost, like we're all conditioned to be like, oh, it's cheap, it sucks. But right. <laughs> that, that's not true, right? Like, and, and so we've worked really hard to get tons of reviews and people that aren't us telling us how great the product are. It's other people who are totally not connected to us saying that it's nice stuff. Um, and on top of that, we also want to create an environment where we were treating people well. Like we have you know, a very, uh, for a company our size, like our, our benefits to our customer, to our employees are pretty, um, uh, pretty nice. And also we put a lot of effort and time and money into taking care of our customers. So that's been huge. Cause man, we've all been burned with not just in the bike industry, but it's elsewhere. Like it, it's frustrating when you have that really crappy customer service experience and you kind of never want to work with that brand again. And we wanted to be the opposite of that. Um, so that's been pretty cool to see as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we got two questions here in the chat. Uh, one, our friend Andy from the Velo studio, he asked, um, when will, when will he have the 27 five droppers back in stock? So we're getting a bunch of stuff. Actually, uh, we got quite a bit today and then we have another pack, uh, shipment. I don't, for whatever reason, the shipment got split up. So fun times in shipping land. Um, so we're gonna have some more stuff tomorrow and then we have a lot more coming like towards the end of the month. So it's, it's kind of been like, we're getting it as quick as we can. Usually what we do is we try to put everything together to, to try to make it more efficient. But at this point we're just like, all right, whatever's ready, let's go. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we'll have more stuff here. Say at 24th is today. So we will have more stuff here by the end of the month as well. And uh, I apologize for that, man. It's frustrating. It's, <laughs> we want to try to get stuff out there. Yeah. 
Cool. Uh, Karina42 asks, any plans to make uh, the droppers in silver? Is that a thing? Ooh, that, that could be a thing. Um, <laughs> I have not... I have not thought of that. So the, so, okay. So the stanchion needs to be black. We use a, a it's called hard anodizing. And, and it, as part of the process, the, the product does need to be, uh, well, it can be any color, but it's very expensive to do that. Um, right. so black, that would need to remain black. However, the rest of the post could totally be silver. Like, are you talking, well, I guess I can't talk to her, but, um, <laughs> like a polished finish, I assume is what you mean. And that's, that's totally doable. Maybe we could do some limited editions in that. That would look pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. For the, mm, okay. Let the, me think about that. I like that. The retro Gretsch is there that that wants some uh some blingy parts. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Any other questions in the YouTube chat uh, or in the Zoom? Just raise your hand. Um, Bicycle Touring Explorer says I am putting the PNW Coast Stem and PNW Coast Handlebar 480 millimeter on his Surly Long Haul Trucker okay. as we, as we speak. Nice. So, That's yeah. pretty cool, man. Thank you. Um, so Rod Schultz um, asks, you know, the bars and posts look great. Any thoughts on the, the rack market? Is that a space that you guys are, are even considering? Uh, we are a little bit. Yeah. That's um, again, I, figuring out what, like, what are the, what's the minimum that we all need, like in terms of compatibility. Um, but yes, we're totally interested in that. I think we could do some really cool stuff, especially if like we made a, a bag that then was able to fit on uh, either the bar and or the racks. Um, is it a front rack, rear rack? Um, actually, yeah, I mean, if, if you want, uh, if you could email us just info at PNW Components, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on what would be cool or what you're using. Because um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm totally into it. Yeah. Cool. So Kyle McKenzie asks, what's next for PNW? Any big future plans? Any big investments given the current high demand for product? Uh, all right. So future plans. So we are going more into, uh, we love on-bike storage. I think it's so cool. Um, whether it's storing tools or, I don't know, your phone or your keys or just stuff that you have to carry with, especially on like a shorter ride, like, um, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to be, we're going deeper in that direction. Uh, we have more, uh, you know, travel adjust on the dropper is a fantastic, uh, option to have on there. So we have some more posts coming. Um, we have more cockpit components, so stems and handlebars. We have more dropper levers going. So basically those are revisions of what we're currently doing. Um, and then we'd love to get more into uh, soft goods. So that's everything from like bags, um, to, you know, possibly some, some riding gear as well. Um, so that's, yeah, that's where we're looking in the other investment. This one's less exciting, but, um, is basically ex being able to expand our same level of customer service, um, globally. I mean, that's exciting for us, but I know it's not like, oh, we're getting into frames. <laughs> uh, but, but that's another big one too. We get a lot of demand over in Europe, Australia, um, parts of Asia as well and South America. So that's, that's a big project because, Again, I'm not, I'm not willing to expand until we can replicate exactly how we're taking care of people here uh, elsewhere. Um, so that, that's going to be a, a big, that is a big project we're currently working on. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of which, this is a kind of a tie-in question. Emerson Cortez asks, is there in international shipping? Uh, yeah. How can we make it work? He's in Costa Rica. <laughs> Costa Rica. Awesome, man. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so there is international shipping. So we are able to get stuff. Obviously, just it costs more, it takes more time. Um, and, you know, we, we do take, you know, obviously we, we take care of everyone who buys stuff. So we're, we are able to do it. It just costs us a lot to, you know, if we need to, I don't know, send a, a little small part or something or like a bolt, you know, maybe the saddle clamp bolts need to get replaced at some point or whatever. Um, it just costs us more. But uh, we are, we are doing it now. So that is, that is a possibility, but, um, I'd love to get a, a stronger presence, uh, especially down there. We get a lot of questions actually from Costa Rica. Um, I think there's some, <laughs> killer riding, some killer riding there. So yeah, I'd love to, to get that one figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, so Ian Richter asks, uh, what's the difference in the internals between the pine versus the coast? Yeah. So the exterior obviously looks very similar. Um, like the mid cap is the same between them. Uh, the stanchion is different. So we, we used a press on head so that we were able to get the, uh, the, the Schrader valve in there for adding air. So the cartridge themselves, 
Um, basically what the coast has is, ha uh, sorry, the, the pine would have about half of what's going on inside as the coast. And the only reason for that is because the air is adjustable and it's both supporting your weight um, as well as making the post go up and down. So with the pine, it's just basically, it's just a little bit simpler of a design. So it has a uh, oil bath inside the cartridge that controls the return speed. Um, we use preset air. So there's no need to ever touch the air, but the, that preset air allows it to, you know, come up consistently without uh, any issues there. So there, it's pretty similar. It's just, again, there's not that adjustable aspect and not that dual chamber um, that I was talking about. So it's, other than that, it's, it's somewhat similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to use the second camera again, because I can and GCN can't. And, <laughs> um, what was I going to ask? I just got so excited about hitting the second camera button. Um, so there's a, there's a place here I can fiddle with to, to add air. Let's say I, I never touch it. Is there any chance that the, the air bleeds out? Uh, at what point do I have to, to put more air to, to make it work? Or is it pretty well contained? Yeah, I mean, it is very well contained, but with anything that has moving parts, there's obviously going to be tight tolerances between seals. And then also with a Schrader valve, just like your car tires, um, it, it, you know, it's going to leak over time. Same thing with a fork or a shock. So right. uh, basically what you do is if it feels soft, you fill it up. But it, I mean, it's going to, I mean, we're talking like months in between this. It's not like a every week kind of thing or even every month. I mean, we're talking, gosh, I don't know, three, four months at a time. Um, it should be fine. So it's not, it's not a dramatic thing, but that's just how, it's just how high pressure air tends to work. Right. If it's not <laughs> sealed. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, not too high maintenance though. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to take it home here. Uh, thank you so much, Aaron, for, for joining us. Uh, is there any, any, any last minute things you want to say or anything else you want to add? No, no. I mean, I just thank you for having me and thank you all for, uh, for, coming in here and listening to me talk. So now I'm stoked to be here, man. It's a, uh, it's a definitely a cool community you guys are, have all put together. So I'm stoked. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, if you guys are interested in this guy, there's a link in the description below. Yes. It's an affiliate link. It helps the channel, all that good stuff. Uh, I've not posted my review of the post yet. Um, again, this, this video was supposed to be an unboxing, but I got too excited and put it on early. So look for the full review in, um, in a couple of weeks. I'm currently been riding with it on the, the Crespin Bora, but it may move to the, the Monster Cross Jones bike just because the geometry uh, allows for a little bit more, more drop. So if you want to see that review, don't forget to subscribe. Um, thanks again, Aaron, PNW uh, Components. And until next time, keep the supple side down. See y'all. Thank you. All right, cool.